never seen him that shade of red before. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the Bible, okay? Daniel chapter number three. We'll be in Daniel chapter number three. Daniel chapter number three is where we will be. chapter number three, and we'll be in verse one. We'll be in verse number one. Please do not let how familiar this portion of scripture is. Just say, yep, yep, I know where he's going with this. I got this. Don't worry about it. Because it may surprise you. All right? So stick with me. Stay with me through this. And I promise you, if we'll allow the Lord to, the Lord will help us. And he'll bless us in this time that we're gathered here together. All right? Nothing happens by mistake. God didn't uh, make any mistakes. And uh, he, he's got us right where we need to be this morning. Daniel chapter number 3 and verse number 1. When you found your place, let's go ahead and stand together all we can and will. Daniel chapter number 3, verse number 1. We stand to honor the reading of God's precious and holy word. Daniel chapter number 3 and verse number 1. And the Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the pro uh, provinces to come to dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then, and Herod cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. We're going to stop our reading right there. You can have a seat uh, this morning. Thank you so much for standing as we honor God's word. But we are going to be looking at what I would call a very familiar portion of scripture. Uh, these three Hebrew boys that we're going to talk about this morning by the name of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. You would probably know them better as the Bible calls them. Uh, that Nebuchadnezzar gave them the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All right, so if you hear me saying Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, that was their given names. That was their God-given name, wasn't their slave names. And so that's why I called them that. And the Bible calls them that as well. But as we get through this uh, book here, you'll see uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But these young men, they were friends of Daniel. Uh, Daniel was a friend of them, and what I love most about these young men is Brother Mike Brown, these men had a backbone. Yeah. These men had a backbone like a saw log. I mean, it was tough. It was hard, and uh, it wasn't going to bend for just anything. But these were young men that were willing to stand regardless of what it may cost them. Mm -hmm. These are the type of men that are lacking in Christianity. These are the type of men, can I just be honest? It's lacking in Christianity today, Brother Danny, simply because it's lacking in society today. I'm not preaching on this topic, but 
just so you know where I stand on it, this lie, this lie that the society is giving you of toxic masculinity is a lie. Right. Amen. There's nothing toxic about being a man. There's nothing toxic about standing for what you believe in. There's nothing toxic about standing up and calling evil evil. Amen. There's nothing toxic about it. You can say, oh, well, I wouldn't be your wife. You're right. <laughs> Meaning you couldn't handle it. Actually, I treat her like a queen. Because she is my queen. Amen. But toxic masculinity is something in our society. And uh, that's something that uh, is, it, it, it is trying to be taken down in our society. These men are lacking today. We have people who are just wanting to go with the flow. I don't want to make any waves. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And I'm sorry, but if you're going to stand for God, waves will come. Amen. Waves are going to come. Now, it's not the time to shove our head in the sand, but rather to stand tall and proclaim that I am a Christian, and nobody can take that away from me. Aren't you glad this morning that can't nobody take your salvation away from you. Amen. 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 Can't nobody give it to you, so they can't take it away from you. Amen. Your salvation came by faith. For what Christ did at Calvary. See, I had nothing to do with that. There was no way I could keep myself saved. And there's no way I can lose it because I didn't earn it. Amen. Let me say this this morning, though. We got to get to the point to where, even if self, even if the society says that well you can't be that way, listen, can I tell you something? Society is telling us it's okay to kill babies. Yeah. Yeah. Society is telling us it's okay to have a liquor store on every corner. So uh, it's, uh, I'm telling you, society is telling us now it's okay to have a bar every other step. It's okay to go out and have 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 alcohol with your with your supper. They got it everywhere you go. It's okay to pack, pick you up a six pack at the at the uh, gas station whenever you go. We need to talk. Pick you one up when you go pick up some gas. It's everywhere you look. Society's going to tell you, okay, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Be a lush drunk, and nobody's going to care. You know, and I don't know why I'm here, but y'all know, y'all realize that. Y'all notice how everything in society has gone up? Price has gone up on everything. Every, I'm talking like doubled many times. Y'all realize that since the whole 2020 fiasco of COVID, alcohol hadn't gone up but maybe a penny, a dollar at most. Why do you think that is? They want to keep you out of your mind. Selling dope on every corner now. Legalizing it all over the place. Legalizing it everywhere. So since society says that's okay, is it okay? No. I think I'll just stand for the Bible. You say, oh, yes, you're one is. of those. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. Amen. 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 I'm not doing any of y'all, but some of you right now are thinking in your mind, oh, he's a legalist. No, 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 no. Understand the biblical term of a legalist before you start throwing out those little two cent words. Mm-hmm. Wow. You don't have to do none of it to be saved. Say, yeah. I stay away from that. Amen. 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 You can write that down. Say, I said it on this day. <laughs> Amen. We have too many people in society feeling led, family led, wife led, husband led, mama led. We need men that are willing to step up and be God led. Yes, sir. That's what these men were. Listen, I don't care who it upsets. I don't care who it makes mad. I, I, I can tell you, I make sense at the house, and if mama don't like it, she can get she can get glad the same britches she got mad in. Yeah. Amen. Some of you fellas got touch your toes up right there. <laughs> if my wife don't like the decisions that I make, she can get glad in the same pair of britches she got mad in. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Why? I'm the one responsible for my house. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I am the one that is responsible of leading my family. Yeah, you say, oh, well, you just don't know what it's like to have a strong woman. Go talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> you 
there in the rest of the congregation laugh? That's why. They know how strong she is. Amen. Listen, we are called men. We are called to pastor our families. Yes, God. Amen. Listen, Pastor, I'll let you say all the hard stuff. I'm not called to pastor your family. I'm called to pastor you. Yes. And then, sir, you pastor your family. Yes, sir. Amen. Isn't that a good responsibility? Mm -hmm. Don't get mad at me. God said it. Amen. I got a question for you this morning. Y'all ready for this? We're going to get started. We ain't even prayed. We ain't even got through the end of part of the introduction. Long runway. Amen. <laughs> we'll get to cruising altitude here before long. Don't worry about it. <coughs> question for you this morning. Will we stand? Will we stand? Serious question this morning. I'm glad we can laugh and shut up and have some good times. Joke around, but it's a serious question this morning. When faced with this situation of these boys, Will we stay? Unfortunately, in our society, many would have bowed down. Unfortunately, in our churches, many would have bowed down and done exactly what the tyrant wanted them to do. From all accounts of Scripture, everyone else did, except these boys. We know that times will get tough in days to come. I believe they will. I believe our days. I believe our days are numbered, Brother Matt. I do. This isn't gloom and doom message this morning. I promise you that. This is encouraging. Amen. It bless you, bless you if it ain't broke. But I promise you this morning, it ain't going to be long. It may not happen in my lifetime, but it might. But it may happen in his. And they do their dead level best to shut preachers like me down. Who stand on God's word who stands firmly on God's word and won't be willing to back up. Listen, I ain't, I ain't built that way. I'm not one of those ones that will just kind of live how you want to and you got to hear with God about it. No, 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 no. I'm going to preach that Bible to you. Yes, sir. The Bible says be ye holy for he is holy. Yes, sir. So, yes, I'm going to preach holiness. And, yes, I'm going to preach that we ought to live the way the Bible says. Amen. And there's a whole bunch of group around here that likes that. Amen. Amen. Miss Carol. My life changed when God said it. Amen. My life changed. Did that happen overnight? Oh, boy, I, he's still working on me. Did y'all know that old kid song took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, sun and the earth, and Jupiter and Mars? He's still working on me, brother. No. Amen. <laughs> Been saved since I was 21. But he's still working on me. So let's just talk for a few minutes on this topic. Will we Will we stand? Listen, it's your responsibility. It's your duty to stand. How would y'all feel? I'll, we'll pray here in a minute, I promise. <laughs> How would you feel this morning? We've got some veterans in here. I know I know of a handful of veterans that are in here. Thank you so much for my freedom. Yeah. You should say thank you for my yeah. service. Thank you for your service. Mm. Thank you for my freedom. Amen. Because without you, I wouldn't have the freedom that right. I have. Right. But Brother Mike, Brother Danny, a couple of guys I know that served in our, our military. How would it work if soldiers, when the battle got tough, took hell and ran? Would we be free today? No, we wouldn't be, would we? We'd be owned by somebody else. Y'all know what's happening in the Lord's Army? Don't think that's just a kid's song. I'm in the Lord's army. Yeah. Might sing that one day in here just to get you adults back in the Lord's army. <laughs> but we're in the army. Yes, Amen. But then you was in the army. But Mike, you like to stay under the water. <laughs> Amen. But let me say this. None of them ran. If they had, we wouldn't have the country we do. Church, we're in the army right we're in, we're we're in a fight for our religious freedom. Yes. Uh, and you say, "Well, I ain't heard nothing in a while." Buckle up, right. buckle up. It's coming. I pray it never does. Oh, I wish the church would repent, yeah. as yeah. the Bible tells us, yeah. Yeah. And, and I wish we'd ask God to forgive us and He'd heal our land. Right? Yeah. I, I wish that would happen. 
But with the week back preaching, and I said it like a minute, you're not finding that anymore. You're not finding people that will repent, get right with God, and say, no, Lord, we want you to heal our land. We're going to take our land over, and we might be meeting underground. What's going to happen, church? When they say if you go over to 523 U.S. Route 1 on Sunday morning, you'll be, you'll be shot. You'll be arrested. You'll be put in prison. What's going to happen at that point? Will we just stay at home? You say, well, Pastor lives right down there. Y'all go get him? <laughs> or will we be like Christians all over the world? stand. Stephen, these boys stood. You, if you know the accounts, you know it, that they stood to the point that they were cast into the fire and they did not back down. How many of us would have got to there and whoa, 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 hold on now. Nebuchadnezzar, let me bow down real quick. Well, it's hot. I don't want to get too close to that. Modern day church, two years ago. This is not a political message. We're, we're, I don't, I'm not a politician. I'm a preacher. Yeah. Amen. I, I pastor a church, and it's my duty, my duty to call out the stuff that I see in society and see what's going on in our world. But as your pastor, I would be amiss if I did not address the things that many are going through and could potentially uh, side, sideswipe us in the future. Let's go back and talk a little bit about what's happening at the end of chapter number two. We started there in chapter three. And but in chapter two, the king, at the close of this chapter, acknowledged the supremacy of Daniel's God. He acknowledged the supremacy of the God of heaven. And yet, here he erects this image to Baal and to himself, demanding divine honor. Probably there was a state policy uh, in, in place about this, that in such an empire that people's nations and languages there could be no unity but in universal prostration before one and the same object. So he's saying here, he's saying that you cannot, we cannot be in full unity unless we're all kneeling down and praising my statue. We have seen in days past and currently in certain countries and certain societies that the brother Mike Brown that they have made an idol out of certain things. You hear it every year, every time there's an election coming up. Certain sides and both sides, they make an idol out of their platform. And that's all you ever hear about is just the die, the die, the die. Let me, just like I said, I'm not making this a political message. But people will make an idol out of anything. Y'all realize this morning there's idols sitting in this room. There may be an idol to you sitting in your pocket. Amen. There may be an idol to you sitting in that parking lot out there. There's no two things. The three you here could not have stood alone amid that throng of people that were laid out, prostrate on the ground, set being supported by their faith in the living God. How are we going to stand in days to come if we don't have faith? How, how are we going to stand in days to come if we don't trust God? I've been on faith now for some time. Not God's been on faith for some, had been on faith for some time now. How are we going to stand and this world see something different about us is every time that the stock market goes down, every time that something crazy happens, every time there's a, there's 
a national scare that the church starts biting their nails to the quick, shutting down and saying, no, 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 please, please help us, government, help us. This was a bad time for them. These boys right here had to make a choice. Church was coming today. You may have to make a choice. I'm talking about Americans. I'm talking about Canadians. That's what we got in here right now. We don't have anybody, any Hispanics in here. Are you talking about Mexico too? Amen. We're talking about it all. I'm not just talking about how corrupt one country is. I'm talking about what Bible, the Bible's talking about was the corruption of that whole crowd over there. Anybody, anything that tries to take precedence over God and His Word. No matter the persecution, no matter the decree, I will stand with God. Yeah. Keep in mind, anybody ever, uh, anybody ever been told by somebody they love you? Oh. Right. Anybody ever been told by somebody they love you and you're like, yeah. actions speak louder than words? Mm -hmm. We've all said that or at least thought that anyway, right? You may not have been so brass and look somebody in your eye and say, yeah, well, I should speak my own words, baby. <laughs> no, do you realize we can say we love him all day long, but actions speak louder than words. They do. They do. What will be the action behind the talk? Or will we all just bow down as the rest of the people do? Keep in mind, these men didn't make a stand to prove their manhood. That's not why they did that. There's nothing that you can find historically or biblically that says these men stood, these young boys stood to prove their manhood. No, they stood to prove their faith in yes. God. Amen. Amen. They weren't trying to start a fight, but rather they were standing to be faithful. If God is for us, He's for us, but listen. People say, well, you know, God established government. Yes, you are correct. He sure did. But if God is for us standing with government no matter the cause, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, then why did why does it the government to kill Jesus? Think about that. Why is it that the government is what killed Jesus? Why is it that Paul throughout Scripture stayed in jail because of the government. Why did, he record, why did he choose to record these young men standing against the tyrannical government? Listen, days are drawing short. I'm looking for Christ to carry in any moment. I really am. I'm looking forward to it. Even so come. Yes, I am ready for him to come. But as long as we are here, we might as well might as well make much of Jesus. We might as well make much of God and his word and his house. Well, let's look for just a few moments this morning on will we stand? Will we stand? Let's begin looking at verse number eight. I want you to see in verse number eight. I want you to see the rule that was made. The rule. Wherefore, at that time, this is Daniel 3, 8. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down in worship, he that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. The Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar had made a decree that everyone, everyone was to worship his golden image. He was going to force the entire population to do as he said. Verse number 
verse 4 tells us in Daniel 3, 4, Then and Carol cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nation, and languages. What is that one word in there that says he's making them do it? He said, To you it is commanded. His rule was made that everyone would do as he said. You will follow my rules, is what Nebuchadnezzar says. Now, I understand that the Bible says in Romans 13, and that some of you that know that chapter, know the verses I'm talking about, probably chomping at the bit saying, well, well, what do you think about that? Yeah, I understand that government, like I said earlier, is set up by God. And yes, I agree, we are to obey the government so long as they don't go against God. But as I said earlier, it was the government that crucified Christ. It was the government that killed both Peter and Paul. It was the government that took Jews to concentration camps. Let us not forget the same government that comes into view in Revelation chapter 13. But see, I don't have to worry about that. If you're saved this morning, you don't have to worry about that. We're going to get on up out of here before all that's done. Amen. Time's going short. Will we stand? We all have family watching us. As I said earlier, we start worrying. Now listen, I understand. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, that if you worry, you're not saved. Please don't walk out of here and let your mind tell you that. What I am saying this morning is we need not operate in fear yeah. of what might happen to us. Let's talk about that. What's your name? I was looking over here for you. I, forgot. I was talking to this lady this morning. We just don't know how. You know what? Y'all praying for us. It's really good for us. Amen. What I'm talking about is if I'm not here, the alternative is good. That is out there. There's one time. What would you say if somebody said they was going to kill you? I said, how dare you threaten me with heaven? <laughs> anyway, how dare you threaten me? I'm that secure, by the way. I'm that secure where I'm going to spend eternity. Amen. I'm, I, I don't want to go today. I, I've got family I'd love to see grow up. i got a daughter I'd love to get away one day in marriage. i got a son that I'd love to get out of the house one day. Uh, whether he gets married or not, doesn't matter to me. <laughs> They're probably watching, so i got to get to my job. But I, I seriously, I, I'm not, I don't want to go right now. I just tell I'm there. If it happens, Coming. I don't know when. I don't know when. But I can promise you this. There's some sanctions coming. It's going to make the Christian have to stand or bow. He gave a rule in verse number 12. And I want you to see with that rule also there's a bunch of rats. <laughs> Daniel 3.12, there are certain Jews who now has set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. There were some rats running around watching that day. Be sure that everyone obeyed the decree like good little boys and good little girls. What did they do, Brother Mike? They didn't bow down. Hey, hey, look! These three boys right here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't do what you said. King, king, look, king. Well, we've seen that in our day, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, king. They were the officers turning people away for not complying when you go to the store. <laughs> Society now that everybody gets a hold of that joke. But the funny thing is, they didn't go. There were those neighbors that would make a call whenever you had more than one family in your house. That's what these guys were doing. That's what they were doing. Oh, King, King, look. And the sad part of it is, is these guys thought it was going to get them somewhere in the Nebuchadnezzar. Nowhere. 
gets you on somebody's radar, but not the one you want to be on. Mm -hmm. There are those people that will turn you in just so you go against them. That's what these guys are. They're rats. These guys here have bought the lie that Nebuchadnezzar had fed them when they were turning on their fellow man. Men. Who was a division caused between these men who stood and the ones who bought? We not seen the division oh in our country of people who want a prosperous country and people who want to see it destroyed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna tell you about political affiliation because I don't care whether you're a donkey or an elephant. But I will say this this morning. I want my children to be able to grow up in that country I grew up in. I'm almost, Brother Matt, scared to go to the foreign land. She would say, oh, my husband, there's been irreparable damage done in this country. God be pleased. Amen. But what's it going to take? It's going to take a church that stands. It's going to take a church. Then when everybody else is bowing, we stand up in a chair. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We ain't bowing. Mm -hmm. We're standing up. Amen. I ain't going to bow down. I'm going to get higher. Yeah. Because I want you to see me, sir. I'm not bowing down to you. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. It's time the church get that way. It's time we get a little grit in our crawl, right? Yeah. It's time, it's time we get a little bit. <laughs> so we see the rule, the rats. So let's look next in verse number 20. I want to see the rule. Verse number 20 says, And he commanded the most uh, the most mighty men, get a hold of that, he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the fiery furnace. Now get a hold of that picture. Here is this man who is so mad, so upset with these three boys. He says, I want to take the biggest, the baddest, the best men that I got. I want you to bind them in his frustration. You see these big men now? The best, most decorated military men walking these three boys up. Now get a hold of this. Because he was basically saying, how dare anybody, how dare anybody stand up against me? How dare you do that? He made a ruler in fear. He was fearful that he would lose control. He was fearful that there may be others that would stand up against him. He was fearful of what other leaders might say about his leadership. He was fearful. Listen, I don't make any decisions around Hope Bible Baptist Church according to what other men might think. No. Other pastors call me and say, well, you know, you ought to do this. I say, you stop right there. God called me to pastor here. Yeah. And I believe I'll pay my orders from headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I don't need somebody to feel like they need to pastor their church, their church, and my church. Right. Amen. Yeah. This is the stuff God gave me. Mm -hmm. So I don't make decisions around here based on what other men might think. Mm -hmm. Thank God. I ain't living in fear to no man. Mm -hmm. I thought y'all men don't impress me much anyway. But God, I'm scared to death. Also understand, he's holy. Yeah, he's right. just. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When he was stood against by these guys, he was stood against. We see the rage that come out in verse number 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fiery, uh, I'm sorry, and fury commanded <coughs> to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. 
He was so enraged. How dare you stand up against my orders? Don't you know who I am? If I say you are to bow to the golden idol, then you must. I'll prove my point. And I don't care what it costs. That's what he does. Look in verse 19. <laughs> then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And to cast them into the burning furnace as we looked at a moment ago. Y'all still got that visual? Right? Of the big decorated guys? Verse 21. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. They bound up these three boys. You say, well, how hot was it? Watch verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He was so enraged that he said to do something that had never been done before. Be real careful. He said to heat it seven times hotter. I'm going to show you my power. I'm going to show you my authority. I'm going to command something so far-fetched that no one would ever believe that I would do it. Anybody want to go back in your mind to what he did to the Jews? How far-fetched was that? You have never thought that would have happened. Why come after the Christians next? Mm -hmm. I know they're going to do a lot. They might. But I know that when people get so enraged, they do stuff that's never been done before. Mm -hmm. We've seen that in recent years. Do it now because I said to you, don't question my authority. Notice with me what this rage caused. Verse 20. He told the most mighty men in his army. He told them these were the most decorated. These were the most successful men in society. These are the very people that have power and prestige. These are the ones who kept the king's economy rolling. But notice in his demand for people to bow down, his rage cost him. killed the very ones that kept his government running. Look with me at verse 23. Our pile given on this thing will go to the house. So this morning, we have gone through, we looked at the rule, we saw the rats, we saw the rule, we see his rage. And I want you to see lastly, the rescue. Verse 23. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, and rose up in haste and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He said, You put three in there. Why, why, why are you asking us? Yeah, you know we put three. You know, you got lost your mind in your rage. What are you doing? He answered and said, Oh, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth will get a hold of this right here. Oh, I want you to get a hold of this, because I'm going to blow your mind here in just a minute. And 
the fourth is like the Son of God. Who is that like? Jesus, right? That's what my Bible says. Amen. If you've got a Bible that says like the Son of the Gods, please come see me after service. Yes, amen. Y'all don't realize how many Bibles say Instead of calling him the big S O N of God, capital G, they call him the Son of the Gods, little G. I'm not mad at you if your Bible says that, but please let me get you one of these copies. My Jesus ain't just some Son of the Gods. My Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. He is the spotless Lamb of God. That's just one of many I could take you to. But he is the Lamb of God. The spotless. If he was just a son of the gods, what he did at Calvary means nothing for us. Amen. What he did at Calvary means nothing. All of us are still lost. Because he was just some sinful man. Little things matter, church. Something that small. Changes the deity of what was who was in that place. I don't know why you got so excited about that. I love telling people the truth. It makes me happy to tell you the truth. And then what makes me even happier, whenever you tell somebody the truth, they're like, church. It is worth it. I don't know what's coming down the pipe. I can't tell you that this morning. I'm not I'm not trying to be a gloom and doom guy this morning by no means, but I do know this. I know that if something comes up against the child of God, my God said I'll be right there with you. Amen. These boys were facing a fire that had never been burned that hot before, and not a single stitch was singed on them. The word upset if somebody calls us a holy. We're upset if somebody tells us that, well, we know that he, he really, he shouldn't go to church all that much. You know, you just got to go to church all that. You might, I don't know why you let that pastor tell you to go Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday. I don't know why you don't even have any ask for a revival. You want to go Monday, Tuesday, all Sunday, my God. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it hurts your feelings. You know what?
almost clearly. 